Our gospel acclamation in setting one is the Alleluia found on page 102 in the front of your hymnal. Please arise as you're able. the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again but love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Friends, grace and peace to you from God the Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are kicking off our stewardship campaign. Thank you so much, Donna, for being here and for doing our announcements this morning. Our theme this year is God Gives the Growth. And we've hand-selected our scriptures for these next six weeks to focus on that theme. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul says, I planted and Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. It reminds us that we have work to do to be partners with God in making the most of our community and our resources. And today, our sermon title is Built to Share. Built to Share. Now, I don't know if you all knew this, but did you know that the trees are talking to each other? Yeah, that's a real thing. That's a real thing. Groves of trees in forests and even in urban green spaces like out here, they are connected. Mostly it happens underground in their root systems. See, forever we thought, we figured that trees acted a lot like we so often do in competing with each other for resources so that they might grow and thrive the best that they could and all the others sort of have to fend for themselves. But that's not true. All the way back in the 90s, Suzanne Samard published a really important paper based on research she had done that proved that in these underground systems between trees, they are communicating with each other, they are sharing resources, they are warning each other of dangers. One amazing experiment she did out in the forest saw that there was a bug infestation on the edge of a grove of trees. And what she found underground is that those trees were communicating with the other trees and sending warning signals. And I'm sort of punching above my weight scientifically here. But those other trees produced enzymes that would fight off the bugs. She also found in the laboratory that they were sharing essential nutrients, even between species of trees, just so long as they were close enough together. They share things like carbon and other stuff that I can't even really pronounce but they're connected in really important ways and they're not competing. They're working together and they are sharing. I heard a, a really interesting podcast uh, last week and this week that kind of brought up that research again and interviewed Suzanne Samard. A couple of really interesting things about it. First of all, she says, one of the things we try to do is identify the mother tree. It turns out that in tree communities, there are parent trees, she calls them the mother tree, that kind of guide and direct resources from tree to tree. It expects, it seems, that this tree knows what is needed where, and it expects the other trees around it to reciprocate when it has received. Isn't that kind of amazing? 
The other thing that she mentioned is that when you really look and map out these connections underground, it almost mirrors our neural system in our brains. Constantly communicating, constantly sharing. It turns out that the bedrock of God's creation in this world is relationship, communication, and sharing. When she first published this work in the journal called Nature in the 1990s, they titled it, she didn't call it this, but they titled it The Wood Wide Web, which is kind of interesting because at that time we were just developing for ourselves this idea that the computers could all talk to each other no matter where they were. The Wood Wide Web is important because it reveals to us what God's plan and design is. It's not really competition, it's sharing. God's creation is built to share, and so are we. The podcast, which was On Being with Krista Tippett, if you've never heard that before, there's hundreds of amazing episodes. Please check that out sometime. Deeply spiritual. But in the podcast, it pointed out that we have a lot to learn from the trees. That really, when you take a look at history and the working of our own societies, competition doesn't work nearly as much as communication and sharing a symbiotic relationship where we realize that we are all connected and we're all in this together. It's true for the trees, but it's also true for us. The world that God made is built to share. That's how it's put together. That's how it's designed. The mother tree, by the way, I think is my new favorite image for God. The mothering tree that guides and directs, that sends out resources, but that also expects that the others around it are gonna do the same thing. The trees in the forest have mother trees and we have God who provides all benefit and blessing, but expects us to take part in the sharing. It turns out that when God created humans and human society, God expected the same thing. Symbiotic relationship, reciprocity, the kind of mutuality and sharing that we find at the foundation of God's creation should also be at the foundation of who we are as families, as churches, as culture. This is who we are. This is the world that God made and which we now inhabit. Our first reading today comes from Genesis chapter 1. There's a really interesting word in there. This is the first creation story, by the way. I'm sure you know there are two back to back, right at the beginning of the scripture, but this is still the first one. On the sixth day, God created humankind. And God said, these humans ought to have dominion over the birds and the fish and the plants and the animals. And that word dominion gets us caught up a little bit. So does the word subdue that comes later. I would argue that those translations are hard to put into English. But it gives us the sense that, hey, all this stuff is ours. We ought to just use it and throw it away. That's what dominion means, right? It means we are the rulers and that all the rest of it is our subject. Not really. Especially not when we consider that God says you ought to have dominion right after it's revealed to us that God is an us. Did you notice that? Let us create humankind in our image. We Trinitarians love this verse in scripture because it's really early demonstration that as far back as anybody could remember, as they told the creation story, God was revealed as an us, mutuality, working together. We'd go on to say three in one, mutually benefiting, mutually giving and receiving. God is an us. And so if we truly are created in the image of an us, a mutually sharing, mutually beneficial relationship, God, then dominion looks very different. We are an important part of a bigger system, but we are part of a whole system that's meant to share, share with each other, to give and to receive. It turns out that the dominion that God wants 
is one of mutual sharing. God desires a sustaining, sharing relationship, both with nature and with each other. If we are made in God's image, then that's not just what we do, that's who we are. Mutuality and sharing seem to come easy for the first church of the apostles in the book of Acts. It says, they gathered together with glad and generous hearts. They shared all things in common. They spent time in the temple, but also in smaller gatherings in worship and in prayer. It says they did so with glad and generous hearts. Sometimes people will get a little bit upset, especially with that sharing all things in common thing and go, well, what were they, socialists? I don't know, probably, but they didn't know what that was. For them, it was just intentionally sharing. They saw in the person and work of Jesus Christ a call to live into that image of God in mutuality and in sharing. It was just part of the nature of those gatherings. Those who were the first to follow Jesus in the way of Christ, they were built to share. Our gospel lesson comes from Luke chapter 6 this morning. We hear Jesus say, the measure that you give will, the measure, will be the measure that you get back. If you listen really closely, and if you're in a building called Grace, in a congregation called Grace, that might sound a little odd. The measure that you give will be the measure that you get back. What about God's grace? Well, God's grace is certainly the center point of this entire teaching. Remember, Jesus also said, love even your enemies like God does. Love those who don't love you like God does. Lend like God does, expecting nothing in return. It's all grace. Jesus' statement, the measure that you give will be the measure you get back. It might not seem like grace at first glance, but it is. Because Jesus here is simply talking about how we are built to share. It's not just who we are. It's not just what we do. It is who we are. The bedrock foundation of who we are. This isn't what they call prescriptive, as in give because you know you're going to get it back. It's predictive. If you are living into God's image in the person of Jesus Christ and who you truly are, then you will give freely. And you'll have more than you could ever wish or dream for because God is a giver. On a podcast that I listened to about Suzanne Samard's Wood Wide Web, they came to the conclusion that our human systems need to be designed more like nature, mutually sharing, reciprocal. We need to be more like the forest. Here in the church, we're not just a gathering of people. We're not just a membership club. We are those who gather, proclaim God's goodness, and live into Christ's calling to be the image of God and the image of Christ in this world. And that means sharing. We are built to share. One of the things that God has given us, aside from all the material blessings in our life, is the ability to have gratitude, to be thankful for what we have been given. With our council this year, we're reading a book by Scott Cormode called The Innovative Church, and he has something to say about gratitude. He says, gratitude is not complete until it becomes generosity. Gratitude is not complete until it becomes generosity. Miroslav Wolf would say, we're not the end points of God's gifts. We are midstream. It comes and it is passed along and it comes again. It's part of the big system that we were created into. We are built to share. And as we kick off our stewardship campaign 2022 with the theme, God gives the growth, we remember that we are called and encouraged to share of ourselves, our time, our possessions, trusting that God is going to make growth happen. And that growth is gonna look like a lot of things. The growth of our church and membership, that's always at the top of everybody's list. We always need more members, right? Yeah, sure. God is going to provide that growth. But God is also going to provide growth in our ministries to be the most effective and life-giving that they can be in our community. And God is going to provide growth in you and in your family as we share in our faith together and grow like that mustard seed in our faith. This is what we trust God to do. But we have work to do. God, who is the mother tree, will guide and direct, but we must share. And when we share God's gifts here at Grace, we can be assured 
that God will indeed provide the growth, all the way from you outward into this world, into the impact in our community. As we seek the fullness of life in Christ for all people, we give and we share. Because remember, for as far back as anybody can remember, all the way back to the first creation poem, we know who God is. God is a sharer. God is a giver. And that's who we are too, made in that image. It's what we're built for. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>